Hello guys, George with Virtual Staging. Today I'm showing you something really quickly. Let me get my yellow here because I, I love yellow colors. And I've been asked to put this, where it is my photo, something where the photo has gone. God, why I'm losing my things all the times. Here it is. They've asked me to put this table thing or whatever is the thing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this in 3ds Max in export the file uh, export the model and import the model back in this um, scene here being virtually staged and without further ado let's crack on on on, on. so as you can see i've already opened my 3ds max and i'm going to copy my image paste a ref image so it just it does what it says you know, on on the tin uh <laughs> it's uh pasting reference images you just copy the image and paste it back into this max and yeah you get it there so so i suppose this in real life this should be in around of uh, maybe 90 centimeters by something and for all of the us guys just convert those uh units to inches and you will get what i mean so this should be 90 on the width or oh, actually not 90 maybe maybe it should be wider i suppose uh, it should be like 70 let's say by 120 now it's more possible yeah so now what i'm going to do is i will put my gizmo right there at the bottom so i'll get, get it there and i'll put the gizmo right there and the next thing is i'm going to select the image as you can see i've selected the image I'll activate the gizmo and I'll put the gizmo at the same location where I have my gizmo on the box. So once I'm done, there it is, the gizmo is over there. So I'll snap this to, to the box and I'll just scale down the entire piece. Voila. Now I have more or less approximately similar size image. And what I can what I can, what I can tell right now is I have to divide this as at least the bottom part should be divided. And here it is me. I'm going to detach this and then I'll put a cap on it and I'll put another cap here because I don't want those two pieces to be like hollow. I mean with open sides. So seeing on the reference image i think this has to be a tiny bit scale because it should be like set inwards and just make furthermore i think this is okay and now what i actually this is low way too much Maybe put the system on i'm going to scale it up tiny bit i think yeah that much so the next step is i'm going to put some edges on on the sides of the, this of this uh, box so far it is only box and before i proceed i'm going to detach uh, quickly just one line from this box and now I'll, I'll hide it for now because i don't need this box but later we, we're going to use the box now remove the edge so i'm going to what i've just done i don't need this and i'll put two additional edges on, on the verticals one of the top and one of the bottom next thing is i'm going to put mesh top of my box so it is an ugly ottoman so far so i'm going to move those edge retaining edges inward slowly this will start to resemble what i have there obviously this is really simple um tutorial or just an ottoman but i decided to show you how, how you can build uh, simple pieces and you don't have to rely on finding models online so i'm going to get this thing out of the uh oh, like inwards and maybe yeah just tiny bit and on this plant as well i'm going to put it there and here as well i think it is very similar it's not exactly the same i mean obviously if you put additional effort in it and you can make it exactly the same and in this case as this is a tutorial and a real project at the same time i don't have time to put more effort in this but i do have enough time to make it just about right so 
what else I think I have to do next is because the the bottom edge is like very far from the from the from the bottom of the box I think and as you can see here we have this really tight uh, end got coming in uh, to the wheel piece at the bottom I think we have to put the second piece at the, at the bottom it will be closer to the bottom it will define the bottom as yeah you see how it defines the bottom here and additionally this piece have a further another this side and on that one as well and here maybe one more and another one so so far it is starting to look more or less similar now on the middle is this this piece is a little bit fluffy like a, it's been inflated so we can inflate that as well what i'm uh, what i need to do is put two additional edges select the, the top vertices of them and then maybe i'll have to drag those as well tiny bit then i'll drag the middle ones just a tiny bit just to make it and now i'm going to drag the rest of them both as well on this side just a tiny bit Maybe the middle needs additional one and which I'll be looking upwards. Okay. Now we have to do absolutely the same thing on the sides. So I'm going to put the middle edge out, pull it out this on this side and on the right hand side as well. Then I'm going to put the, put the other sides of this box and maybe have to do it for those vertices a tiny bit to make it all right okay. and i think it needs the same attention to that side as well and maybe to this one as well i i basically there, there was another way where i can use the slice modifier and just model one of the sides but i decided to do it that way um now we have the chance that we uh, as you can see there are some tiny wrinkles and what we can do basically is we can um either reconstruct those recreate those wrinkles with texture or in modeling and i don't have to do uh, i don't have the time to do it with texture so we are going to do tiny wrinkles with modeling and for this case i'm going to basically convert this as a editable poly and I'll put on top of it a maybe quadrify mesh and I'll reduce this and then I'll use the retopology tool which is part of the, the latest 3ds max and I'll just compute everything at once and after a while it's done it is okay I would say it's fine so I'm going to collapse everything into editable poly and I will use this poly, poly cloth um, brush which is an amazing tool you should go and check it so I mean basically uh, you can start and do this and uh, <laughs> as you can see it's just like it's a crazy stuff I'll just touch it slightly here and there just a tiny bit and what I can also do is put some pressure and so I start this and it will inflate additionally as you can see it gets really nice and fluffy so the next piece do you remember this plan which I just uh, it was hidden a couple of minutes ago remember this bit and this is why I needed that spline because it just simply I don't have to do everything from scratch every single time hence I've kept my spline and I'm going to add some thickness and variation here so I think this is fine, it should be 1.8 because that's the typical thickness of those uh, panels usually and let's say around 40 centi oh, <laughs> 40 centimeters it looks just about right and as you can see we have tiny wheels at the bottom and I think we can recreate those as well, why we shouldn't and we can use some small cylinders of course you can go on SketchUp or you can go on one of the 3d websites and find some wheels and use them but in, the, in this case what I have done guys wow um, sometimes this happens because I'm almost sure I have the auto welding turned on yeah. automatic welding was on so let me go back and create my cylinder here 
the, the, the panel and it should be something like this and I'll put it 32 segments two parts basically and create those two parts and here is the second part so I don't want to go into further details because this is more than enough uh, for this uh, piece and what I'll do guys is I'll select everything I'll make it a group and I'll center the gizmo and I'll use the symmetry modifier to just double all the wheels on the other side so I'm going to go and collapse everything into editable poly and we are done so basically this was the modeling piece now the next thing is we have to create some sort of uh, leather texture where it is everything guys uh, fabric class okay leather we have leather in less than 15 minutes i've produced this piece hi guys i'm back again in my 3ds max and here is a trick so let's all to be select use files or get this here is the trick you just get your image and you just put it in your viewport and then pick a viewport background in a second you will have this exactly the same operation it's just quicker it saves you a couple of clicks then what you have to do is you have to go and convert the entire scene to corona rendering if it, if it wasn't converted of course set the output resolution to match the exactly the same output resolution to your image then the next thing what you have to do is you know the drill you have to go and set up your vanishing lines so you get the vanishing lines you find the lines you set that set up them and boom bam okay this one i'll use the tiles on the floor to make it right okay this is fine go fine and on the other side maybe yeah one of the tiles are there so the next thing is i will do this and okay i think i'm fine and then i i don't have to use even those blue lines because everything else is perfect and i know it is perfect we are going to create a um, shadow catcher material you know how to do it if you are new to this video go and watch the video after this one or maybe here there is a video right there right now and you basically you will learn how to do this shadow catcher material with corona and i'm going to put the um, image here and by the way did i told you to press the like button if you like this video i um, keep forgetting this so i'm going to put this apply this and i'm going to put my ottoman back into the scene because i've saved this thing with my connector and it's huge i can do some distance work and i think this is looking awesome see what i have to do else i'm going to put the environment map into the environment and sorry guys this was my keyboard and maybe i will test now let's see we have it it is yeah it is looking great i'd say the next thing in this ex exercise is we have to really match the lighting so what i'm going to do is i don't want to waste any time on setting properly lights but i'm going to fake the lights so I'll put some uh, rectangular light and i'll make it over there i'll get another one i'll put it over there and that should do it but not so the idea here it is to remove all of the caustics and the reflections and leave only the reflections and lower the intensity of those lights at 20. let's test now it is looking better but still i think something can be improved of course this shouldn't be visible guys or it is visible um and the problem here it is that with chamfer then after the chamfer you have to add smoothing modifier smooth and now everything will look as it should be now it's everything is perfect still i'm not satisfied with what i see here because i think it it can do well but i i'm a professional so i love to do a professional job what i'm going to do to replicate this so far it is use my ground plane <laughs> i bet you never thought this was possible so i'm going to use the ground plane to block it as there was a sofa and this is what i'm doing right now i'm just extruding 
basically those sides of the polygon just to block the space to look like that there is a sofa right there so now if i render everything i have more accurate representation of this image i keep forgetting guys and watch this video right now if you're new to the channel and yeah that's it guys and maybe you have to subscribe